Okay, hi everyone. So um, just want to first make sure that everyone can uh, listen to my voice. So um, I'll just chat. Just a second. Hmm. Okay, so please let me know if you cannot hear me. But if everyone can hear me, then uh, I'll get started. So hopefully now everyone's here. Welcome to um, AI605 um, Deep Learning for NLP class. So the class will be at uh, 2.30 to 4 p.m. Actually, uh, probably will end about 10 to 15 minutes early every um every uh, lecture so that you can go to the next lecture. Um, this will be entirely virtual. Probably you also already heard about it, um, but you are um, welcome to uh, visit me at my office offline. We can make arrangement, but it will be virtual. So um, it's you're not expected to be anywhere physically. All right, so, and I believe all, you guys can also see the um, the slides, right? So let me know if you can't. So I'm, I'm using this so that I can also write down with my iPad. So um, I already wrote, hi. So let's try it out. Um, yep, so I'll introduce myself first. So let's see. Um, yep, so my name is Minjun. And, hmm. Interesting, just in one second. Looks like the uh, iPad and the, uh, my presentation is not synced. Weird. Okay. It's really weird. Okay. What? Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 see how I can do this um soon. Um, I'm not gonna probably need it right now actually. So, okay, wait. Just trying to connect my iPad to my um, iMac. So just one second, please. weird okay there you go okay now we can see my underlining right okay so yeah my name is minjun um so i'll be the uh, instructor for this class um so my research area is actually nlp uh, mainly and um, knowledge-based large-scale machine learning so um so what i teach in this class probably will be very relevant to what i do uh, for my research and i actually joined kais this semester i'm pretty new actually i'm uh, probably um not as familiar as um, most of you are um, trying to learn how to use these KLMS and different systems, but so we'll have some um, hiccups in the in the uh, in the early um, early stage, but hopefully no problem, no big problems. Hopefully, yeah. Um, so I like sports, uh, music, and coffee. So actually, I like uh, climbing. I climb a lot. I'm not these days because of the um, the COVID, but then um, I like climbing. I like going to gyms. Uh, I was a uh, pretty, um, I was a drummer for a long time. And also um, I was in uh, some band, I was doing some vocal um, thing too. And then um, I like coffee a lot. I, I drink like three cups a day, I think. So I'm pretty um, addicted to caffeine. And so that's me. And um, my office hours will be at Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. Uh, my office is located in Seoul, so for those of you who are in uh, Daejeon or other places, um, you can, of course, always um, ask, ask for um, a, a virtual meeting, but then also you might want to, of course, visit me, office, so that you're welcome to, so uh, please do that. I mean, please uh, email me, or actually there is an official request link, so I'll actually um, put this in the uh, syllabus, and I'll distribute this, um, so you will know how to do it soon. Okay, so that's that. And now I want to introduce you 
uh, our TAs, wonderful TAs. Um, one of them actually could not join today, but then um, I think all other threes are here. So let's see. Um, Mio, are you here? Yes. Yeah, okay. Great. I'm here, yeah. Um, I think other people are here too. So we'll just spend a, a few, uh, I would say like a minute to introduce uh, each TA and I'll probably introduce Taeyong for you instead that he's not here. Okay, yeah, go ahead with, uh, um, can you go ahead and then introduce yourself, Mio? Uh, okay, uh, I'm Myungko and I'm the PhD student in Minjun's lab. And also I'm the first semester in KAIS, so I'm unfamiliar with the system I, I might be. <laughs> and uh, my research area is mostly NLP and question answering. And I'm interested in interpretability and bias study in NLP task. My office hour is Tuesday 10.30 to 11.30, and you can contact me via email. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, okay, so uh, thanks, Myung. Um, next, uh, Hyungwon, could you also, yeah, are you here too? Maybe not, okay. Is Dunsel here? Uh, yes. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, could you introduce yourself, please? Uh, I am Dunsel Yoon, and I'm a master degree student, and I'm, uh, uh, I am, in uh, Gyeong, Professor Gyeon Kim's uh, lab, and I study reinforcement learning. And my office hour is Monday, 4 to 5 p.m. So if you have any questions, please uh, email me. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, so, um, and um, I think Hongguan and Taeyong are not here. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. But um, they are also in Daejeon too, and they, uh, their office hours are uh, listed here. So hopefully they can introduce themselves in the um, uh, KLMS and other uh, form. But um, we have four wonderful TAs. And um, as you see, um, we try to distribute the office hours um, so that in case you have class with like uh, that overlaps with my office or you can go to TAs. I mean, please contact TAs um, um, like and me freely if you have questions. Um, so, and details will be on online soon. Um, I'll put that on, on the KLMS. So don't worry about it. I mean, you don't have to really write down anything for this class, I think mostly. Okay, so let's get started. Um, and um, actually, yeah, actually one last important thing, like most important thing is actually the students, right? So, um, so there are actually uh, 75 students in this class. So it was, the cap was actually 60, but then um, several people, several students asked uh, me to, um, enroll additionally. So we actually, I think I um, accepted all the um, uh, the requests. And there are several also several students um, and also neighbor engineers actually auditing this class too. So just in case you're wondering, uh, but you guys are also welcome to um, audit auditing this class is like always welcome. You're all welcome to also share the links if you want to. And um, Actually, so one one really great thing I, I think is that the um, there are nine departments across um, KAIST participating and uh, register for this class. So actually, apparently, um, KAIST AI have forty eight students, but we also have a lot of uh, students from uh, WE and CS, and also other um, departments. Um, so I also want to welcome you guys. Yeah, as you see. So yeah, it's really good to have you here, and um, let's make this class a wonderful. <laughs> Um, let's make this wonderful semester. Uh, we can do that all together. So, um, yep. So, what what are we gonna what am I going to be talking about today? Will be uh, basically these things. So, uh, I'll first talk about what is NLP, and then um, why study research NLP, um, and I'll go over the course. And uh, lastly, we'll be doing some um, math at the end to see that uh, if you are actually ready for this class, um, of course, if you're not, then um, please reconsider taking this class because it might be, um, probably you might want to take other classes first. Okay, so let's go. So first, um, number one, what is NLP? So um, if you look this up in the Wikipedia, um, NLP stands for natural language processing, and there's a definition says um, natural language processing is a subfield of linguistics, computer science, and artificial intelligence concerned with the interactions between computers and human language 
in particular how to program computers to process and analyze large amounts of natural language data. Um, so it's very typical definition that you can find in Wikipedia, but honestly, I don't really get this too. I mean, what, what does this mean? It's not super intuitive, right? I mean, so let's, let, let me try to give you a maybe easier definition of NLP. So I think this is like probably right true for most cases. So I think how we can define NLP is that, okay, let's first def try to define AI. I think AI is really about creating a useful function that can kind of mimic human, um, human beings. So basically there is an input and output. And in a pure NLP problem can be defined as uh, where the, you're creating this function where the both input and output are text or something simpler. Um, and an, an NLP problem of course is a bit broader so that either input or output is text. So basically when you're trying to create a function that involves text as an input or output, then probably you're working on an NLP problem. So I think that's uh, hopefully easier definition for most of you. So what then what are, what are the examples of NLP problems? So let's, let's, let's try to take a look. So I think one very um, simple yet very useful um, NLP problem is text classification. So um, I think um, these, you, you recognize what these are. These are the uh, movie reviews. So actually this is our, these are the reviews from IMDB. It's uh, one of the most popular website for uh, writing reviews on movies. And you have like, uh, you know, some comments about the movie or review. It says like terrible, overrated and plain boring, um, blah, 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 right? So um, so that, let's say that we have this review, right? This review, but then maybe we don't know what this is. Then a task can be, okay, given the text, this is input, what would be the, um, probable rating of the movie review. So that could be an interesting or a viable NLP problem. Basically input is the um, movie review, output is the um, rating from one to 10. So in this case, then model will be right if you, you can create a model that gets this uh, text as an input and outputs one instead of a uh, three or 10. I mean, it's apparently not good review if you read it, right? It says terrible. Um, so. You can basically um, hopefully um, also classify good reviews too, but I only wrote bad reviews here. I don't know why. Um, so that's one example of NLP problem that I think many of uh, we are pretty familiar with. Another example can be question answering. So I think we, we do this a lot too in our lives. So you might go to Google and ask when was KAIST founded? And you actually, find that the answer is February 16, um, well, February 16, 1971. So um, I'll probably try to explain how this works later in this class, but then, I mean, I'll not probably, I'll for sure explain how this actually works. But for now, you, you just think about input and output, right? This is input, the, this is input, your query, and this is output. So here, um, in, the first, in the text classification case, the input was text, but output was more of a classes, right? Classes can be, it's basically simpler than something like text. But then in this case, you see that the input is text and also output is a text. So um, this is called question answering and um, you basically are also dealing with some NLP problem here. So another example can be uh, machine translation. So here your input is, it is a beautiful day. Whoa, what the, the iPad doesn't work again. It's really weird. Yeah, this is very annoying. Oh, there you go. Yep, so the input is a beautiful day and the output is in Korean, right? So, so, um, you see that the um, it's also an output problem, right? So it's machine translation that you translate the English into Korean. Um, so another example, of course, is um, summarization. So you have a you know very long news article. This is this is actually a pretty um, recent one that um, Twitter is actually creating something similar to Clubhouse on Android. Um, actually, you know that Clubhouse is not on Android yet; it's only on iPhone. So. Um, so there was some news about it. And 
maybe you're too busy to read all the news. So you might want to, you know, um, create a model that can read this entire news text um, as an input. And um, you basically have a, you know, short summarization text that, uh, you know, kind of um, encodes important things in the, uh, in the, in the newspaper. So that's another, um, you know, text problem, an output problem. Um, so, and we can get a, a bit more um, complex. Um, so personal assistant, this is also an output problem too, because, you know, you want to ask something in, in text, like in iPhone, you want to ask, like send a WhatsApp message to Alice saying, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Then you actually want this to, um, you know, you want the assistant to understand this and um, do something on the iPhone basically, which is uh, sending a message through the WhatsApp. So that's an, an, one example. Or maybe you want to go to Google Assistant and then ask a question just like you did in question answering, but kind of similar, but it's more of a dialogue style than the uh, single turn, right? You ask like, uh, did the Packers win on the weekend? Um, and apparently no. Um, and other thing is, uh, it's uh, Clova is a neighbor's um, personal assistant, and you might want to, you, you know, in case you know what, uh, you can read Korean, you will see what this means. Basically, um, you can actually do a lot of different things. Um, say, for instance, um, when you go out of the um, your home, then you can say, okay, um, I'll be back. Then the Clova, your personal assistant, might be able to turn off everything, right? Um, or you, you might want to ask Clova that uh, I want to rest, and then everything that's you know like you turn up the Clova turns off the TV and everything. So um, you get the point, right? I mean, if you want to create something that can assist you, probably you want to communicate with that, and your communication channel will be most probably uh, language. So you want to create an NLP um, model that can do that, and um, you can of course a personal assistant and um, can be more uh, very personal by being um, chatbot, right? So you can you might be able to you know commu uh, talk about really uh, everyday things like I'm mean, something that's not really anything uh, goal objective object or goal oriented. I mean, in personal assistant, usually you want the model to do something very concrete. In chatbot, you might just want to do chit chat, right? Just like uh, you know, you know, just uh, some some fun things. You know, so if you get the um, joke on the left. Um, so I ask, I like cows, and the 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 um, model says, I heard they go to college. Cows go to college. I heard that a cow went to Harvard. What did the cow study? Bovine sciences. Do horses ever go to Harvard? Horses go to Hay Hay Hayward. So it's like a you know, it's pun. Uh, in case you got it. Um, so this was actually um, an interesting conversation that Google found with its um, conversation model Mina in 2020, early 2020. And I think many of you who are um, in Korea, I mean, I mean, or I mean, in, you're actually following the Korean news, um, that uh, there was a chatbot called Iruda that was very uh, popular in, in the many aspects. I think um, well, number one was that it was very, uh, very personal and very, um, I would say, emotional. Um, you see that, like, uh, you ask Iruda what you want to do, what's your dream, and then Iruda says that the um, uh, she wants to be a owner of a big building. So I think there was some news article saying that it's kind of sad that, um, like, you know, dream is being a, just the owner of a building. Um, but of course, that was not really the issue of this chatbot. Um, so there was, uh, I think, two big issues. One was a uh, bias, bias in these models. Um, and number bias being basically was sometimes being racist, sometimes being very, um, I would say, very um, controversial. Um, they were, you know, outputting some co controversial. Um, I would say, yeah, they were it, very, very controversial statements. And also uh, later, people found that actually the it's also very dangerous because the model contains uh, very, um, uh, very privacy sensitive information, and they you can actually exploit. You can actually kind of hack so that you can extract what uh, like uh, you know bank numbers. Um, we all, I will actually cover this too in this class too, because you will actually, after uh, taking this class, you will learn why Iruda was vulnerable to these things, why Iruda was very biased. So that is also covered in this class. Uh, by the way, the, the service now stopped because of all these legal issues. Um, and also, um, these days we're seeing a very, very um, 
large advancements, very exciting advancement in LP um, that seem to be very, very difficult in um, last like, uh, you know, a few years, which is, I think, uh, mostly um, characterized by um, the GPT-3, in case you know, last year. So let's see what this means, actually. So there is um, this very cool demo that what GPT-3 can do. They actually can generate uh, a lot of different text, including code. So let's see what, what it can do. So um, I'll actually open a YouTube and then um, let's watch that for a second. I'm not sure you can listen to it though. Um, just a second. Hi there. So I saw that. Okay, so I'm trying to share the screen first. Oh, so uh, uh, TAs, please uh, help me. I mean, please let me know if you cannot hear or um, you cannot uh, see something um, so that, yeah, I can fix things. So um, let's see. So here is the screen. So I, I believe you see it. I'm not sure you can hear it um, actually. Uh, I'll share again. Yeah, it's the. Uh, there you go. This and probably many of you have seen this. Um, open AI. Actually, I just I'll just mute because I think I'll, it's better for me to explain. GPT two is yeah. language model. Okay, so you guys see the uh, the uh, the video, right? So basically, this is actually demonstrating how GPT. I mean, what GPT three can do. So. One of the interesting thing is that you actually give the uh, the model like just this. You basically create a function, just like you're doing the coding coding test, um, and then you write this comment, check whether a string is a palindrome, and you put this as an input to GPT three. You and it basically, let's see what it does. Writes a function, and it's actually it's correct, right? I mean, this it's checking whether it's palindrome. It can actually do more complex things. Um, so let's see, like uh something like a bit more complicated, right? Uh, what are the list indices for the palindrome? And then when you write this, then the GPT-3 can output the answer too, like that. So it's, it's quite crazy. I, I mean, you can basically give a text description of the function you want to create, and then it creates it for you. Um, so it can do like uh, really crazy other things too. Like, I mean, you write this um, other function inside a class you create, you create it. And then you just basically give just a, uh, you just write a comment. Um, you will see it. Um, so there you go, actually. So you basically wrote this comment, compute total price of the order, including the pound discount. And basically GPT-3 writes everything for you like this. So it, it's quite, I mean, some, this was only possible, like I think, very recently, like last year, like not even a year ago. So it, I mean, it's really good time to study NLP because a lot of exciting things are happening right now. Um, so I think video is good here. Um, let's go back to slides. Hmm. There you go. Yep. Okay. So, um, and more recently, like like two months ago, actually, um, what has been um, published is that now you can even do things across modality. Like you can basically input text and then create the image, like generate the image. Um, you see, these images are actually all the fake images. They're not real, real images. So what the model did was that you put the this text into the model. And basically you create this in each individual images. Um, the model basically does that. So you see an interesting thing, right? You basically have a input of an illustration of a baby hedgehog. 
in a Christmas sweater walking a dog. And then you create really interesting illustrations, right? And these are all uh, synthetic. They're generated. They're not, they're not retrieved from existing database. So it's it, that's like where the really crazy things comes, right? Because I mean, now these things can even help you uh, to design or I mean, do something in the uh, more of a creative environment, right? So um, creativeness is not entirely distinct from um, AI anymore, like if you look at these things. So um, and you also see another interesting example that um, a neon sign that reads back prop, a neon sign that reads back prop, I mean, apparently you won't, I mean, there is probably no neon sign saying back prop in the real world, right? I mean, unless like uh, the, the owner of the, uh, the pub or something is like a super AI geek. So you see like, these are not really, uh, you know, retrieved from a uh, database, they're actually generated. So th these are really cool things. And another thing, another really cool thing is that, um, so sec if you go to second example, um, so this is actually, you can play around with this a bit if you go to this website too. Um, by the way, this PDF will be uploaded by the way. So you don't have to write down anything. Um, this will be all, all uploaded and I, 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 oh, okay. I forgot to actually record. Okay, so I'll at least start recording that now. Probably because we didn't really do anything. Oh, actually, wait. It's it's being recorded. Okay, what the heck? I never said record. Yeah, probably it's recording. Okay. So another interesting thing is that um, you have a text prompt saying an armchair in the shape of an avocado, an armchair imitating an avocado. And then what I uh, what I did was I basically just changed that word of avocado to peach. So this there's avocado, right? Um, you see this avo uh, the avocado. Um, then I changed that to peach. And then you see really interesting images, right? Um, they're all generated too. So cool, right? So of course, you can really think about different ways of using this model. So I think now um, these um, different problems and things that NLP model can do, I think inspire you why we need to study and research NLP. So I think number one reason is pretty straightforward, right? So maybe you want to build these tools and agents. And uh, I mean, maybe you are, I mean, I think it's, uh, uh, you want to, you are, you're interested in making things that are useful for the world. I mean, that's really um, something that, uh, I mean, every engineer should really aim for. And um, it's great, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's a really good goal to work on. I mean, it's very, um, it's very um, motivating, right? Um, but I think uh, there are also other people that have a bit different goals um, when you're doing more of a research than um, um, engineering. And I think, of course, I'm not saying anything. One one goal is more important than the other. I'm just listing these um, goals that you want. You might want to um, goals for the reasons, but you might want to study NLP. Maybe uh, number two is that uh, a bit different is that you, you like machine learning and NLP is a great application to test it. So um, that's actually really uh, the important distinction between I think um, machine learning and NLP when, uh, when, when people ask you what you're studying. So um, I think people have different opinions too, but then um, personally, I feel like uh, when you say you're uh, doing NLP, you're more of a application oriented. So your interest in uh, what uh, the language can do um, what a, what a model that can learn language do? Uh, when you say you're a machine learning um, guy, then or a person, then I think it, mean, it usually means that you're more interested in the learning theory or how the learning mechanisms that uh, models can basically mimic. And basically, you want to use the text problems as your test bed or benchmark to test your uh, learning algorithms. So if you're like interested in making a you know, better optimization algorithm that you're more of a machine learning person. And in that case, then you might create a machine learning algorithm. Then you want to test that on the NLP task so that you can verify your algorithm is very um, generalizable, not just in some small domains. And another reason, reason that you might want to actually study um, NLP is um, a bit different from these two is that what we learn from NLP, what we actually um, uh, learn from NLP can be applied elsewhere. So what, what do I mean by that? So I'll just show you one interesting example that was pretty also recently um, uh, hot. Um, and it's actually a protein folding problem. So um, if you just look at it, it's like not even related to NLP, right? Because what it does is that you have a protein um, 
and you want to actually uh, predict you, 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 when you're talking about protein, protein is a sequence of um, some, um, uh, you know, I'm not really expert here, but expert here, but basically sequence of different, I would say components, um, chemical components, basically. And you can basically uh, put that as a, you know, sequence of uh, chemical notations. And that's basically this um, um, sequence, right? Um, and then, um, you, ba you basically um, um, need to know how they look like in real life, because in the real world, they are not uh, really sequential like that. They're not like linear. They are actually, you know, complexly, very complex um, um, shape and orientation like this. So the problem here is that the, the how the protein looks like in real world actually um, affects a lot of different scientific uh, problems, including like drug discovery, because how protein actually um, really, how behave really depend on the structure. So let's say that you create a new drug, right? I mean, you're working on Celtrian or something, um, and that you want to create a new drug. And the, 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 at least like the hypothetical, um, the um, function of the dead drug new molecules or drug will be very dependent on how the protein looks like. If it's a, of course, protein-based, um, you know, uh, bio uh, drug, right? So that's that's why it's really important to actually um, predict how the protein looks like given a, a arbitrary pro protein sequence. And um, there were several um, teams that uh, worked on recently in machine learning um, area. And this was more traditional problem was more of a, um, they tried to observe it with the microscopes or other, other ways or more of a very, um, I would say deductive way. Um, but then machine learning people actually try to um, put this as a more of a, you know, machine learning problem, of course, end-to-end -end data driven problem. And actually DeepMind was able to pretty achieve, a, I think very meaningful achievement here. Um, but then I think the, um, the, the point here is that the, um, it's not 100% it's not sure, but it is very, um, uh, people think that what DeepMind actually did was they used the um, transformer, which is a um, um, architecture that was originally derived from natural language processing community for machine translation, but that was very um, um, powerful tool, um, powerful architecture, and um, people think that that was the, the really key in the um, how we, they could find this, um, they could uh, come up with this uh, really model for predicting the protein structure. So. What I'm saying is that um, what you learn from NLP might be really applicable in scientific domains too. That's um, more directly meaningful to uh, uh, people's lives. Um, and number four, actually, uh, probably, uh, which is more philosophical, but maybe quite important for many of you too, is that um, I, language is like the key to understand human intelligence knowledge. Um, I think everyone agrees with this because I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm um, trying to, uh, you know, transfer the knowledge to you through language, right? I'm, what I'm saying is all language. Um, language is like the most efficient um, medium that humankind, mankind, uh, humankind found in last, like, uh, you know, uh, in, in throughout the history, right? So, um, and the communication is really the, uh, the really important for uh, transferring and also encoding knowledge. And also we might be able to, um, mimic human intelligence by uh, really having a uh, language understanding model. So, so some people actually do uh, the research NLP purely because they think if you can create a really good language model, then you are actually creating an intelligent agent. So that could be your motivation too, right? So whichever your motivation is, of course, you might have a multiple motivations. You, I mean, you might want to do all these four things. You might want to, you know, uh, do your own startup with these making tools. And then maybe also you want to have more of a, you have an intrinsic interest in these language, uh, how language works. So uh, whichever it is, um, welcome to the uh, NLP class. So let's take a look how the course will be structured. Okay. Um, so overview. So let's now get into really the, um, the, the details. So,
probably many of you are interested in how degrading works, right? Um, so degrading will be largely in four parts. Uh, one, coding assignments, so 30%. Um, and we'll have a two assignments, uh, each 15%. Writing assignments is 20%, two assignments times 10%. Uh, final project, 40%. And participation. Uh, participation is mostly about uh, how you participate in the discussion session that I will um, soon uh, talk about. Um, I'm not sure I'll do attendance uh, because um, I don't think it really means a lot in this, like, uh, because I'm going to record this and then also upload there, but um, I might need to because the school requires me to. So um, um, I'll let you know if we, you don't need to attend the class, but you might need to. So for now, uh, consider that you need to attend the class. Uh, probably, of course, we cannot, I, I didn't do attendance check today. So um, I'll let you know about this, but there is no exam in this class. Um, so coding assignments, there are two assignments. And um, apparently, very apparently, um, if you don't do anything in AI, uh, unless you're a pure theory person, uh, you need to be able to code. Um, we will use Python and PyTorch. Um, let me know if you really don't want to learn PyTorch and you want to do use like TensorFlow or MXNet or other things, but I really highly encourage to use PyTorch just because uh, it's easier for us to uh, communicate, I think, to be on the you know um, same page. And um, you'll be uh, there. Assignment number one: You'll be asked to write uh, um, actually uh, neural networks, RNN based, from scratch. So you will not be allowed to use RNN um, model in PyTorch, but you need to actually define everything yourself. And you will use this to do text classification. And assignment number two will be that you will use a popular NLP library called Hugging Face to create a text generation model. So basically number two is more about how you can use the, uh, the, the powerful tools. Um, these are your weapons for your research um, so that you can actually um, be familiar with these things before you start your final project. Um, two writing assignments. So why, why are there assi writing assignments when you're studying NLP? Because if you wanna be a good researcher, um, I wanna emphasize this really a lot. You need to be a good English speaker, reader, writer, and listener. Um, that's a must. I mean, I don't think that's optional unless of course you don't wanna do research, um, but uh, I think many of you are here to do research, right? So um, this is not optional at all. Um, so you will be actually uh, required to do um, a lot of English work not super a lot, but I mean, like this lecture is in, in English too, right? So, um, so number one assignment, you will find and analyze frequent argument patterns in NLP papers. Um, basically, this is because the writing NLP papers is oftentimes very, um, very, um, it it's very, um, there's structure that uh, people follow. I mean, start with introduction, you know, follows, but followed by relate work. Um, these are really the um, common patterns you find and you need to, learn these things so that you can actually write a good NLP paper. Uh, this is of course applicable to other um, AI areas like machine learning uh, vision, but then maybe they're a bit different, uh, like slight difference in NLP community that you find. Um, and uh, number two is that based on the, the uh, what you found, you will try to, you will be asked to write a sample research paper. Of course, it's not really uh, real research. You'll be basically writing a fake research paper uh, because of that, I mean, um, you might also choose to actually write a full research paper if you are actually working on a project that involves some missions, because I don't want you to work on two things um, at the same time. So, but um, I'll give you the detailed in, um, uh, instructions when the assignment is um, placed, like in probably April, I think, or early May. Um, and lastly, pro final project. So final project will be about creating an open domain question answering system. I think you just, I just show you, I think, basically you, you, you will be creating a system that can do this, um, this one that I showed you. No, this one, uh, what we, you could, uh, you asked on Google. You basically want to create, you will be creating a system that you ask when was KAIS founded and you get the answer of February 16, uh, 1971. But, um, I also want you to, um, where is it? Um, if you're working on NLP related research project, um, you are welcome to work on it instead. 
Um, so, but then please consult with me first uh, via email if your project is uh, sufficiently NLP related because I don't want you to uh, use your some project that's not, not related to NLP at all um, in this class. So let me know though. But then final deliverable, deliverable will be a report. And this will be our weekly schedule. Um, so um, in the first week, um, I'll be introducing NLP and deep learning basics. Um, and number two, recurrent neural networks, uh, text classification, sequence tagging. Um, and here the coding one assignment will be out. Um, number three, encoder decoder sequence generation. Uh, week four, transformer and coding one will be due. And uh, week five, NLP paper writing and writing assignment number one is out. Uh, week six, language model. Week seven, paper analysis presentation that you did for um, the, the week five. So basically that's why writing one is due. Um, week eight, pre-trained language model and fine tuning. So, and uh, coding two is out actually, two should be here. Um, uh, week nine, NLP tools such as Hugging Face, uh, Verisic. Uh, week 10, introduction to the final project. I'll be talking about open domain QA in more details. Um, and coding two assignment will be out. Um, and week 11, large language models and uh, writing two assignment is out. Actually coding two is due in week 10. Um, and week 12, uh, we'll be talking about generalization in, in context learning, such as GPT-3. And week 13, we'll be talking, we'll be doing a paper writing presentation. Um, and writing two is due. And week 14, we'll be doing the final project presentation and project will be due. Okay, so, um, so far so good. So we'll be um, actually, um, so actually, um, um, so now lastly is that um, I want you to be, I want you to test yourself if um, what I'm gonna talk about today um, here is very familiar to you, or at least you actually remember these things. I mean, understand these things. Um, it's okay if you don't remember these things, but then if you do not understand, then uh, seriously consider, um, reconsider taking this class because you might have trouble. So I'll probably quickly go through this um, and maybe I'll um, try to do recap in next class. Today, I'll be just trying to uh, really show you, or I mean, basically um, give you an opportunity to assess yourself if, if this class fits, you, fits to you. So uh, whatever I talk about right now, if it doesn't really, uh, it's not familiar to you at all, then yeah, we consider taking this class. But if you kind of remember it, then probably you're fine. Okay, so um, number one, calculus. So we're talking about uh, single variable and multivariable calculus. So um, you need to be, um, you probably don't need to really do integration a lot. I mean, integration is FYI, um, something like, you know, like this, right? Oh, my bad. Like, you know. So this is integration, integral. So hopefully uh, we don't really need to do this a lot, but if you learn calculus, probably you know this, right? So, um, but you surely need to learn know how to do differentiation. So what they might, what, what I mean by is that, let's say the Y is something like two X square, then can you compute this? So that's uh, something you have to be able to do. And um, um, I'll actually give you the answer here um, because of the power rule, uh, it will be two times um, two X, which is four uh, X. So hopefully you know this. And uh, this is single variable calculus. You only have one variable, but then you also need to be able to do um, multivariable calculus, something like, you know, something like that. Then uh, in multivariable calculus, you use partial differentiation uh, notation. Oh, my bad. And also something like 
this, right? So um, if you cannot compute this, probably you want to reconsider taking class. Um, and of course, uh, multivariable calculus is important because you basically need to do, um, not you don't really have to do it, but then you need to understand that what it means to um, you know, differentiate a, a matrix, not a single value, but a vector of matrix, because you will be dealing with the matrix differentiation a lot in, the, um, in deep learning. So um, be sure to actually be familiar with these things. Um, um, I'll, and I'll see if I'll see if I want to let me see if I want to revisit this next class or not. Um, I think calculus is probably but something that everyone should know because um, something that you do in your first two years of uh, bachelor. Um, so, because uh, now later then basically you'll be doing a uh, uh, multivariate calculus where the number of variables will be not just like two. Here the number of variables is two, right? But um, this is n equal to, but this in NLP will be going to something like, like trillion, uh, billions. So that's like uh, where the NLP is going these days. That's why you need a lot of GPUs to do these things. Um, so I'll probably skip this slide. There's probably nothing much to talk about. And linear algebra. So, um, so can you do matrix multiplication? Suppose, um, can you compute this? And um, how you do this is that um, if you want to comp you, you compute the, this value by um, inner product of uh, wait um, I'm actually a bit confused the uh, direction but I might be uh, you know confused with, with direction but basically the idea is something like that because like the how you do the linear algebra in math and in the PyTorch or TensorFlow code is a bit uh, mixed up but something like this so you basically if you want to compute this value then it will be uh inner product of two four and one seven so it'll be two times one right so uh two times one plus uh four times seven and uh here of course is then now um uh so i'll use another color um three one and one seven so it will be mm, three times one plus one times seven. And um, here the will be, of course, now two times two plus four times one. And the last one will be um, three times two uh, plus one times one. So then this will be at the end, um, yeah, I'm not so good at this, but it will be something like 30, 10, um, 8, and 7, something like that. So, I mean, you don't have to be really super accurate about this. I just need to be familiar with these things. Um, okay, so algebra. And now about um, function estimation in machine learning. So. What is machine learning? So machine learning is really about estimating a function from um, the, the really uh, function or estimating the true distribution with the uh, training training data. So uh, what, I, what I mean by is that um, you're, you have a lot of, um, you know, suppose that you want to um, create, uh, um, so, Basically, it's basically trying to create a function that does your task. So how you do that is that you basically give a lot of uh, training examples. And here we're, we're all talking about real values, input real values output. So um, suppose that we are talking about one dimensional function. So um, something like um, y equal fx, right? Um, and you're given a lot of uh, um, 
pairs of x and y. So you are given like, okay, when x is uh, zero, you have a y of zero, x is one, the y is 1.1. 1 .1. um, I will just actually say 2.1. You have x two, then you have a, a 4.0, uh, you have three, you have 5.9, etc. And then basically, if you draw this on uh, one dimension, two dimensional plot like this, um, zero, zero will be here. Um, one, 2.1 1 will be something like here. Actually, no. Um, um, one, 2.1 1 will be something like here and three, 5.9 will be something like here, right? And then now observing these examples. Yeah, and then uh, of course three, 5.9 will be something like here. So observing these examples, you see that, oh, there is uh, some um, trend that the function is actually following like some linear um, linear function, right? So, so that's like what you want to infer. That's what you want to estimate from the uh, training examples of y and x, x, x and y. Um, so in this case, the um, you're trying to estimate uh, what the function would look like, and of course, there's you could give some inductive bias of, on on the function, which means that you might want to uh, um, assume that function will be always linear. Then. Okay, then you can just assume that y is ax plus b. Then you just want to uh, figure out what a and b are, right? So how you give the inductive bias or how, what kind of things you assume about the, the function is basically really dependent on you and also your instinct, right? So if you think this model is super simple, then why not just uh, make it into linear model like this, right? But then if you think that model will be super complex, then um, you might want to give a much more complex, um, you know, architecture too, or I mean the inductive bias too. Um, so maybe you might be thinking that, okay, this function might be like super high polynomial function. Then um, you might give a, um, a much higher degree um, freedom, something like, you know, a one X, no, a four X, uh, X um, to the power of four, a three X power of three, Etc. right? Or this is of course a single variable function, but you might be um, having some latent variables in the middle too. But then uh, the point is that you need to know what this means, what the function estimation means really. Because basically it's about figuring out what, what the F is. Um, so I'll probably, um, yeah, um, go ahead with this here. Um, so then what does it mean to train and overfit? So um, we can give you the same example. So, right. So um, let's say that I observe these um, points, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's simpler. I mean, let's say that the actual trend, I mean, the really true um, relationship between X and Y is also linear. In that case, then, um, it makes sense for you to give an inductive bias of a linear function, but then um, you might be thinking, oh, maybe this is like super complex function. So you might want to say, oh, this is like quadratic function or uh, like high polynomial. What that means is that you might be fitting something like this. Um, oh, wait, sorry. My bad. Yeah. Uh, so you might be fitting something like this curve, right? Um, so which is, of course, probably not right. And uh, if you're sure that the, uh, what um, the relationship should be linear. Uh, so that's what's called overfitting. So you're giving the model too much freedom um, that um, it's basically creating, um, uh, you're estimating a function that's, um, that might be fit to the training examples, but uh, when you're observing, um, you know, test examples. So here training examples are circles but test examples might be something like X, right? Then it's clearly, I mean, sorry, I don't have more space at the top, but you get the point, right? Um, you will like entirely miss all uh, these uh, points, right? So um, that's the point that overfitting basically causes um, the model to be very bad at test examples because of uh, this, um, they're just trying to fit to the training data so badly. 
Okay, so that's training and overfitting. Um, so let's now talk about a bit more complicated function that we can use. So uh, neural networks, what people call, but uh, neural networks is actually nothing more than um, a comp more complex function than what you have been seeing here. So you see a simple neural networks, right? So um, you have a two input uh, uh, numbers here too, right? We were talking about one input here, X up for, uh, till now, but let's say that we have two input numbers. Uh, one is X and the other is Z. Um, so um, what we do usually is that we, we actually operate everything in linear, uh, linear uh, I mean, not linear, but uh, basically one arrow here is a linear transformation followed by um, an operation called um, um, activation. So what activation is something like, um, I would say um, like 10H ReLU or sigmoid. So if, if these words are not super familiar with you, to you, then you might also uh, want to consult with me, but um, I'll sh show you what the sigmoid looks like, for instance. So sigmoid is just like a linear, uh, it's very one-to-one -one function, something like this. So um, basically it has a, a interesting characteristic that when X is zero, then Y is 0 0.5. When X is really large, it's, it's uh, approaching one. When x is really small, like negative, then it's approaching zero. Uh, zero. So it's quite simple function, right? A uh, value is even simpler. Oh, this is sigmoid. Relu is something just that looks like this. So actually, you can actually uh, describe this in math really easily too. It's basically just y equal to max of uh, zero and x. So if X is bigger than zero, then of course Y equal X. If X is smaller than zero, then um, 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 it stands as zero. Um, another example is uh, 10H. 10H is similar to um, uh, sigmoid, but it actually has a sign. So it's actually um, zero at zero and something like that. One, negative one and 10H. It's very similar to sigmoid. I mean, it's the, but then the, the real difference is that uh, when uh, it's actually going to the negative side, then it's not zero, but it's actually approaching negative one. So why, why did I just talk about this activation uh, function? Because um, uh, each arrow here is basically um, linear transformation followed by um, activation function, or to be more exact, you multiply something on X and then um, you apply this function, this uh, activation functions. So these are the activation functions. Um, so um, what I mean by is something like this, right? So you basically want to learn these weights like A1, A2, A3, um, and then B1, B2, B3. And basically this value, is um, if you use activation of ReLU, for instance, then it's exactly just um, max of uh, A1X um, plus some bias variable. You also, actually, B is not a good number to use here, actually. Just, just ignore the bias for now. Just, I mean, you can just add something to a variable and zero. So it's just a simple, you know, multiplication and some nonlinear transformation called activation. You basically repeat these things. Like that's one layer of a neural network. And you just basically have like a lot of these things, but they're very simple uh, computations as you see, right? That's a um, one layer of a neural network. And if you do this two times, then you have a two, two layers of neural network. And if you think about it, this is just a function, right? I mean, um, it's not as simple as the uh, polynomial function, but it's just a function that um, just has uh, some behavior. And it's exactly the same thing that we were doing uh, in the function estimation with the linear function. Um, so I think uh, that's it. So then um, I think I'll just stop here actually. So um, I, I think the, the following things, I'll just cover this next week, but up to here, um, it's, um, I think it's relatively simple prerequisite, but um, if you are not with a, familiar with these things, um, yeah, 
again, um, talk to me or we consider taking this class. But otherwise, um, again, welcome to the class. And next week, I will talk about the uh, uh, more of a uh, more uh, intros a bit, and then we'll go into the uh, recurrent neural networks and um, really the, the basics for how we can do uh, deep learning and the uh, machine learning for um, text inputs. So yeah, I'll end the class today here. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see you next week, Monday, 2.30 p.m. Uh, TAs, please uh, remain on this um, Zoom. Uh, students, please, uh, you can leave now, please. Uh, we need to have just a brief conversation about how we're gonna organize this class. Thanks a lot. Um, maybe we should just create a like separate meeting room. So, you saw Kerman and Pangamatas, but you saw Bandra work your precaus rope. So, come on, you got Arasmic and Chanko Kante. Hmm. 이게 줌을 잘안 써가지고 샬렉이 많지는 않고요. 스탑부터 리코딩을 끝내고 스탑.